Hi, my name is Ashley Clark Ray, and I'm very excited to share this video with you. This video is a short tour of a school for the deaf, and the video explains uh, what a deaf school is like versus a mainstream program. I want to provide a creative resource for hearing parents of deaf children to share information and help them make informed decisions for their deaf child. I hope you enjoy this video. Hello, are you ready? Hi there, I'm here at the California School for the Deaf in Fremont, California. Let's go have a tour, let's go. I'm going to meet with the tour guide who will provide us a tour of the campus. Hi there. How are you? I'm great. My name is Ashley. And you are? Yes. Hi there. My name is Jack and I'm the outreach uh, here for the school resource coordinator. Welcome to CSD. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to tour the school. Great. Let's go. We'll go around this way. This is a great place. I can show you all the different departments we have here. And so they're doing the remodeling here. It's beautiful. I'll show you our Early Childhood Education Center. This is where it's infant uh, to five, so zero to five. Uh, with our infants uh, and toddler programs, it's O to three, uh, it's in this school district only, meaning that if you should live um, in Oakland or another city not far from here, they unfortunately can't come to the O to 3 program. This is only for this district. It's a beautiful concept, and I'm hoping this will be adopted and grow. However, this is just for our local program. Now, from 3 to 5, um, anywhere in the state can come. Question for you, can anyone outstate come in? No, they cannot. Uh, no, you must be in the state of California to come here. And we cover a, a perimeter here. How far? Oh, I would say we go, um, well, depending. If students are from Sacramento, uh, from Eureka, which is the very top of the state of California, oh, I'd say about, you know, five hours from here. However, they could fly in and stay in the dormitories. However, you must be five years old or in kindergarten to do so, to live on campus. However, we don't have many parents that do that because you know, they value their children being at home and living in the dormitory at that young age or what we call the cottages here. However, uh, we welcome anyone from three, from anywhere within the Northern California area, uh, from Bakersfield, well, I'd say San Luis Obispo, actually, all the way up to uh, Eureka, and south of Bakersfield uh, will be covered by Riverside. And we cover the Northern California. So let's go. As you can see here, uh, I want to point out the sign to you. This is good for signing all the time. Typically, uh, when we give tours, I always stop and point this out. Many hearing people that come here, um, whether it's national or international folks who come, those who are studying curriculum or just doing general studies, um, you know, hearing ASL students, hearing classes, um, deaf mainstream students, teachers, and the like, a whole variety of people will come here. I mention this sign to them. So they realize, you know, that this is right. Uh, in a hearing environment, you know, you'll have it where hearing people will be speaking and children can listen and hear what's going on. They may hear some things and some things they'll filter out and not care about. The same would apply here. We want everyone hearing or deaf to be signing. Whether you barely sign and don't sign well, like those are our food services or in um, our, our maintenance department, but anyone, we're very strict with our hiring, hearing people that must have signing skills. We want everyone here to sign so children have access to full information. Some kids may choose to ignore something, but again, it's not about a policy. It is a culture here at the school. You know, I even have one hearing teacher 
who has ASL in them and signing, and they don't use their voice here. And they went to a different school for the deaf. And it's very interesting. Mainstream, you'd think that might happen, but a different school for the deaf, no voicing. But other schools and other hearing teachers are saying, you know what, it's fine, we're hearing, it's not a big deal. You can, you know, turn your voice on. And, you know, this teacher's like, no, you can't, because really, it's ingrained in them. It's the idea of the CSD culture of no voicing. And that really makes us unique. It's just wonderful. It's a signing environment exclusively. We've had other uh, group programs and needs here. We've been growing soon so much. A little bit of overlap going on here. You know, at this facility, we hosted a summit a couple of years ago. And our uh, topic and our theme was anti-biased education. So here's some of the tenets of that. Yes, mm -hmm. all individuals, that's correct. We celebrate all. Our teachers here really spiral that concept. And we have that, it's an inclusive concept. We unpack our own privileges. Our own, we, uh, you know, we're white, we have education, you know, making sure that our books here are culturally appropriate and inclusive, you know, making sure we have a diverse group of children in our uh, ASL signs. Sometimes we'll sign mother and father, like mom and dad. Well, that's not always true. What if someone lives with grandma or with grandpa or uncles, or they have two mothers or two fathers? So we've changed it to say family. Uh, pictures that we have up on the wall, they're not just white people. We have a diverse group of people here, so our children can feel connected, saying, hey, that's like me, and that one's like me. It's very, very powerful. It's very important here. We're always celebrating all. For example, for coming to holidays, we celebrate in different ways. We do that via lights, uh, not just with Christmas, um, exclusively. We celebrate all holidays, so all the children know everything with different cultures and a light festival. So that's very important here as we uh, work with this anti-biased education. I want to take this opportunity here and introduce you to our kindergarten teacher here at CSD. She'll explain to you how the kids um, are bilingual, have ASL and English as part of their uh, methods and tools of learning. This is Joan, and she'll give you more detail. Hi there. American Sign Language is our children's first language, obviously. They know sign. Now, equating that back to English, well, here's a good for instance, the sign for mother. So this is sign for mom. So looking for the sign mom, we're looking at where it's signed on the face or what position on the body. Any signs in this general region here, we're looking for words that fit that regional sign on the body. And here it is, mom. Now, they take the mom piece here and write the word M-O-M, -M, mom, making that connection from ASL, the sign for mom, and the print English. And it's a wonderful writing tool. It really helps their writing. It empowers them to be independent, grab the words, and make and write the words down themselves in English. Question, how did you start this and recognize this was an effective process? I remember you explaining uh, there's a variety of different methods that have been used, and this seems to be something that really took off. Yeah. Um, we used to things based on letters. There's the A letters, the B letters, etc. And you know, mom, this is a the, the five hand shape. It wasn't working. So we backed up, we started looking at, you know, different parts of the body. You know, like in children's classes, you know, doing a little dance with the hand shapes and where they go. Why don't we group things by where the signs are categorized and used? Another team teacher of mine, uh, Layla Holcomb. Uh, really come up with this idea and we started taking off with it and it was so effective. Our students felt so empowered. They really were had good self-esteem with this. And you know, rather than being A for Apple, that wasn't effective for our children. And so it's based on where the sign is done. Now looking at that, there's different categories on where this uh, exists. There's the forehead, the top of the head region, like the sign for dad, deer, etc.
okay? Next one here is the sign here, like mom, eat, uh, orange. You know, that's where those signs are located. This is going to be more a chest or body signs, like the word sign for like, love, happy, are all signed in this general region. Next here are things you do on uh, their touch signs, contact signs on your hands, like school, work. Then we have here that are spatial signs, play, go, want, are done here. And this is a new uh, category we recently added, our fingerspelled signs. Some words don't have a sign, they're fingerspelled. Go, bus, ice, that kind of sign. So, that's that category. I'm wondering, with education now compared to 20 years ago, how is it different? Oh, it's a huge difference. Um, we focus more on the teaching methods. Um, you know, we're talking about 157 years of education here. As you think about this school, you know, is it fairly new? Um, this is actually our third campus. Well, actually, it's our fourth campus. Uh, we had two campuses in San Francisco, and then we moved over to Berkeley. And we were in Berkeley there for a long time, over 100 years, and then we moved here in 1980. And so we've gone through a variety of different teaching methods and approaches. Uh, using different tools and modifying them, looking at uh, graduation rates, percentage of success, and I'd say the last, um, you know, this bilingual, bicultural approach. Um, I would say about 30 years now, you know, since 1990, almost 30 years. And we've noticed that teachers have adopted both language trainings on how ASL is used and taught and instructional, how it's used in writing. Um, and again, obviously there's this, oh, you can go by, of course by all means. You know, how do teachers teach? They sign, they write, how do you expand on I concepts and ideas and be bilingual? And over the last uh, 20 years, we've really applied that. And we have uh, an ASL specialist here to work with our teachers on different methods of instruction and writing through American Sign Language. So that's where the teachers have really incorporated this into their training and applying this to their teaching and helping our students uh, achieve. So yes, the last 30 years have been um, very sophisticated. Uh, with ASL, uh, with curriculum standards, you know, ASL standards and curriculum have already passed. Um, that's been done. Uh, that's the uh, Laurent Clerk put that out, yes. And now you can look at the uh, use case as a resource. But teachers have become more sophisticated. And so teachers now are more, um, you know, teaching properly in the right methods. And there's more standards, correct? Not a variety of methods, correct. There's not just sound-based teaching. It's more language on why these words work together and why they're that way. Correct. You know, it's more in teaching English in a visual way. And so students can pick that up over and through ASL. Again, much more sophisticated. Huge difference. So, you know, our students now, as I look back, and they're very fortunate. In my time, you know, everything was sound-based. So this sounds like this. Remember, you look at noun and then verbs. Um, you know, adjectives and laying those out. And now we're doing it through ASL and why things are laid out this way. It's a whole different approach to teaching. And I think that this is really an amazing um, success for our students. We're talking about the school for the deaf here being uh, different than mainstream programs. There's opportunities here. Our students have um, activities, extracurricular activities, involvements, um, a whole variety of programs. Uh, for example, uh, there's the career tech education. Um, this is we have photography, engineering, um, culinary, a career center. We have wood shop. That's like a hearing school. We also have green technology, meaning that our students are learning how um, pipe and electronics work. We have auto body. Oftentimes we have uh, tours with hearing students are just so impressed. There's no such thing at a hearing public school. And this is um, just very inclusive. And now we have our uh, digital media center. That's here. This is where our students can do production uh, from storyboarding, interviewing, all the way through to videoing, editing, and then distribution of students' work, not just teachers' work. At CSD, and I believe for schools for the deaf throughout the country, it's student-led. And we're encouraging our students to make millions of mistakes here, so that way when they graduate, 
they can be excellent problem solvers. I think that's really where it's very different with a mainstream or a, um, you know, t allowing our students to explore our, you know, teacher, it's a teacher driven on where they're following a teacher, whereas we need to let our students explore. And I think that's where that confidence gets built. And it's a whole striking difference between mainstream and residential school. I'm not saying mainstream is bad. I'm just showing what teachers understand of the students. We have the resources and support to let them thrive and grow. And we can tell, oh, you're a school for the deaf student. You can tell. And so let me show you our digital media center. So here it is. Right now it's going on, reno going on renovations. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, hi there. Yes, this is Moclusa. I'll exp I'm explaining them about the tour of the school and the students are making. Mm -hmm. So just showing them that uh, it's teacher, showing it's student driven, not teacher driven. So our teachers are encouraging our students. So that way we can make millions of mistakes here. So when they graduate, they're great problem solvers. Do you get that? Yes, make mistakes here, that's fine. And when you graduate, this person's a senior now. You become a great problem solver. Mm -hmm. And that's why the teachers are driving our students providing guidance and letting you figure out how to do things and understand things. So whatever happens, you can apply that to yourself and your learning as you go forward and pro solve problems. You know, you know, their brother and sister helped graduate here and they're coming to help. Oh, hello there. Oh, I mean, you look so much alike. It's great to see you. Well, personally, I don't know you, but I follow you on Instagram. I really enjoy what you're doing. And obviously, you know you, and I follow you on Instagram, so I know you teach signing. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. This is great. So what are you doing here? I'm filming the school here. I want to show hearing parents uh, options with deaf schools um, or mainstream, and it's it's their decision. And providing information because typically they won't come here. They won't go out of their way. So I want to take a film of the school and show it. Yes, um, I can definitely show that, including, you know, signing, of course. That's, uh, you know, obviously that's uh, heart to heart with that. Yes, I have a heart for that. So no discussion on that. So uh, for the state, you know, showing the heart here. Yes. Oh, from the Cali I'm from Southern California, San Diego. Oh, okay. I used to live in Wyoming, uh, and I moved here two years ago. Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. Did your husband work? I don't remember. No, no, my family lives here, not here. Uh, in uh, San Diego, in San Diego. So, yeah, we moved here and uh, settled in. I'm sorry, maybe it's the wrong time, but maybe some other time when you're in town, you can talk with my students here and explain to them how you film and ideas you have. Oh, yes, I would love to do that. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to. Um, over the next month, I'll reach out to you. Yes, let's reach out and talk. Okay, see that conversation? That happens all the time at the school. That's why we typically, you know, have this ability, someone like you here, your skill sets, inviting you in, we invite people in. We've had so many guest speakers come to the school, presenting uh, to our students, having them learn uh, different deaf role models. You know, I wanna be like this person potentially in my future, and what do they do, and what challenges do they have? That's a great example of having someone here and connecting them, it's so cool. Yes, it is. All right, this is a storyboard. So is this uh, regarding a major? Yes, um, some students will major. Like, is this a continued process? Is it a class? Yeah, this is an actual class. Oh, this is an actual class. Yes, yes, very cool. Oh, thank you so much. Good to meet you. Yes, you're welcome. Perfect. All right, I'll see you. Um, I know we're doing some renovations here, and so I'm here in my first year, 
And so uh, different ideas that are explained. So what I'm trying to do is, um, I'll show you this here, the blueprint. That's the concept of what this will look like, how it's set up. And so I'd like to move this space here, provide this setup here, and become more of a green wall, and also have the filming studio with lighting and the scaffolding, and provide that idea so you could have the green floor as well. So it's a wall and floor, and that's what we're working on right now. It's almost done. Very cool. This is awesome. You know, that's another thing about CSD. We're always uh, coming up with, you know, using the latest technology and investing in that. We've invested heavily in uh, English, in different books and textbooks. We have a tons of them here, uh, but not a lot with American Sign Language. And so that, again, as you said, over the last 20 years, what's occurred, what we're seeing is ASL is becoming more sophisticated. There are standards, and we're seeing this, and we're seeing ASL which was small, and we're building that up. We're building that base. And so CSD is trying to use the budgets and invest heavily in this with renovations. You know, you know somebody say, oh, it's fine. You can sign with it. And the idea is, no, with communication, how do you present it? How do you share this idea? It's such an important part of American Sign Language. And it really is in that student. It's in their heart. And we want to do more in the world in providing that for that student. Maybe a student wants to be a film person, maybe wants to be a reporter. Now that we have more and more, you know, you know news, pardon me, I mean, uh, a whole variety of, you know, DPAN is another site that exists, Deaf TV. There's so much more signing that's happening and our students are already seeing that. It's a pipeline for them to get into that industry. So again, it's the little things that are so important and really helping them thrive and grow with ASL. And questions now are, teachers are using questions and signing them in ASL so they can connect back. And it's not that those students don't understand. You know, obviously, yes, the idea is with an AS, when they read it, an ASL becomes very easy to understand and combine the two. And that's something that our students are doing right now in understanding why that sign is that way and how it connects back. I mean, that the next sentence is easier to understand. And so we really need to improve and increase on our ASL components. You know, also developing scripting. Um, you know, English is a challenge. And so there's that idea of using ASL for sign scripting. And then we're having these great discussions with that. Yes, I completely understand. But the idea that here's a script, here's an example. You mentioned fostering ideas and their show, and here's the idea of what's going on with the show. So cool. The idea is we've got, you know, mice, we have, uh, you know, science information, and we're using that as well. And it's such a nice thing to do. It's not quite done yet, though. Is this the news, the Talon? Okay, the news. Great, cool. All right, very cool. Again, you'll see that our teachers here really invest in our students to be creative. We're fostering them. We want this project. When they want to do this project, we say, go for it. And students are like, all right, very good. And they have these discussions, and they're making this project, and they move forward. So they're always encouraging and fostering them. So this creativity here is a good example of what's... Oh, it's wonderful. You know, I did take a film class, but it was so boring. 
you know, it, so I really is not a lot to connect that because I'm so fortunate they can have this here. You know, so attractive to see this, you know, filming, but this is so cool. What a great opportunity. You know, that, again, um, with it's student-driven, teacher-driven, there's a big difference in how this is done. When you do a teacher-driven, students are just following the teacher, and the teacher saying, I know, here's what I'm doing, watch me. Here, I'll set it up, and the students are just watching what's going on. What we're doing is student-driven, so getting them behind the lens, having them film, and then there's explanations given. And they're learning, and I learn from the students. Oh, it makes me the best teacher ever. I learn from them, I get to become a better teacher. So yeah, I'm learning from them, absolutely. And that's one great thing about Schools for the Deaf, with deaf teachers and deaf students. You know, I didn't have that. So this is very cool. Yes. Again, thank you. I'm so happy you came to visit. Thank you for bringing her here. Absolutely. No problem. I love this. This is great. Okay, thank you. You know, we really preserve our history in pictures from back in the 1860s. Now, I have to tell you, we have an original photo that's filed away. Those are the museum that are just cherished, but we've made copies of these pictures and put them up here. So you can see this. It's just, it's fascinating history of the school. You know, and we've got each category in different levels and different years. Yes, that's correct. Not that many students. No, it was very, very small, and it grew and it grew and it grew. Really, it was founded in 1860 with four students. Really, just four. Yep, and then we expanded from there. Now, how many students do you have now? Um, we've got around 450. It kind of ebbs and flows, but now 450. Are those day students? Okay. What I can say is from the cottages or the dormitories, we don't call them dorms here. Uh, we call them cottages, and that's where the students, some of them live. There are 24 in each building. Um, so in the cottages, we have approximately 250 students that live on campus, Monday to Friday, and they come in on Sunday, and that's on Friday they go back home. Mm -hmm. And the remaining students, you know, are day students. Uh, the other 200 some odd students are day students. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the, our athletics. Um, it's another thing about CSD, uh, the California School for the Deaf. Uh, what's a big gem of it? There are four key pieces. One is leadership. The second being literacy. The third being theater and the arts. And the last being athletics and athletic programs. That's a common theme, and uh, a student may, uh, you know, see this leadership skills, oh, they're from Fremont. Uh, someone's great at arts and the theater, that's Fremont. Uh, sports and athletics are great, you know, they're contributing to Gallaudet University, again, from Fremont. And we're, you know, those that are great in signing and telling stories and writing and literacy, again, from Fremont. One of the key tenets, um, and our students are strong in these gem areas. I love one of these pictures here. It's uh, inspirational, actually. You know, in 1905, I love how the players, um, you know, had the turtlenecks on. It's, you know, the white turtleneck. You know, typically that would be the quarterback role. So, again, great appearance, looking so sharp, you know, fancy hair. You know, it's, I, I, I think I try to model his own hair. <laughs> but um, just very attractive photo, very fascinating. Again, you'll see the same, this is 1905. Again, we have it 1909, we've got the white sweater. Same player. Yeah. Again, we, we really value our history. Uh, when we moved from Berkeley, uh, we lost quite a bit. We weren't able to get everything uh, in our move from Berkeley. So we tried to store as much as we could and we're very excited. We had a huge day with Apple here, contributing as a community giving, hashtag community giving. And they came out and they helped remodel part of the, um, as you saw the, the around the, the digital media room, we have another studio that was being rebuilt so we can expand onto our museum. And it's just a wonderful project. That's very cool. Yeah, it is.
at the school here. The kids are thriving. Many of our teachers come from a workplace where they've worked with hearing people. They know how to work with hearing people. And they've transferred here and become a teacher at the school. And they can explain what it's like in the hearing world. Oftentimes, uh, hearing parents will be like, okay, they come to the school for the deaf, but it's such a small group. You've got this larger hearing world. How do you fit in? How do you function in that hearing world after graduation? We say, oh, oh, actually, our, um, you know, within ourselves at the school, our teachers um, can explain to our students about the world at large and really incorporate into that student as they grow and build that confidence. Again, we're not seeing the suppression within the school system and the classroom of a hearing versus deaf or anything. We're all the same here. And we're learning and we're interacting. And when I come to a hearing person, I feel more confident in interacting with a hearing person, knowing how to do that. And that resource, oftentimes, um, you know, looking at a mainstream program, you can have some interaction, it's true, but the resources with our teachers instructing, um, you know, again, it's only from a book. It's just from a textbook sometimes, and they're teaching from that. But again, we want to introduce them to the world at large, and it's two separate things, introducing them to life, introducing our students to the world. This is what it looks like. Here's how you apply things here. You know, it's deep explanations. And, you know, the idea is we have that. We don't, you know, I want kids to graduate and have this deep resource with through our instruction. You know, in a mainstream program in that environment, it doesn't have that inclusion with all the teachers who are deaf or signing, and there's that resource being shared. Here we have that resource being shared back and forth all the time with our students, and they're learning and picking it up and growing with that. Oftentimes, that's when kids, when they transfer into our school, are just absolutely floored. The first two months are actually quite challenging because they're used to either a quiet environment, uh, isolated potentially, you know, asking, moving, reading the book, you know, watching the interpreter, going home. Um, and reading, and there's just, when they come here, it's a, a new experience. It forces a student to kind of learn and grow and communicate my thoughts more deeply. How can I go from there? And the idea is more things come up, and so it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's normal. But it's how do I respond to that? How do I connect to that? And we, this becomes very overwhelming, and we give them time. We have uh, peer factors for students. We have a great system of support for new students that transfer in. We're providing that support. And after a few months' time, you know, I see this very quick uptick where students can apply this and just thrive and take off in this environment. And now they're getting home and parents are like floored saying, wow, this, we have a different kid, a different person that's just more confident and they're growing in themselves, they're learning, they're providing their thoughts. And parents are like, wow, this is a great decision to come to this school. But it starts at the beginning. There's this little bit of nervousness and anxiety. And after that, there's this great connection. What this means is that we need to have that. How do we get that into a younger age? The younger students, not waiting until middle school, high school and learning this. Now it's almost too late. We want to go back and start younger, correct. You want to start at the beginning and pick that up and have that, not come in and, you know, fourth grade's too late, correct. And the key is identity. We want to combine that identity and also the language and the culture. You know, what's a key component here at the school, it's not special ed here, okay? This is not special ed. We are overlapping our California Common Core. We have inserted Common Core into our instruction. Again, that's different from what would happen in a mainstream program uh, where they're following Common Core by the book, you know, American History, they're teaching it to their students, and the students, um, you know, are like, what about my deaf people? What about deaf leaders? What about organizations that exist that are deaf? Um, you know, I don't know anything about it. Now you're talking about, you know, American History. Um, you know, here at the school, oh, wow, that's, I'm glad you said that. They're inserting things into this program you know, the idea is that the, the, the deaf activisms, talking about our deaf history and how the 1880s occurred and everything that's changed from there. And so students are learning that and we're overlapping that with uh, American history and along with deaf history and inserting that into the American history, showing our identity, the idea of deafhood. We have a deafhood teacher here and I think that makes us a different environment for our students to know who I am. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for that. Thank you for your time. Wow, I really appreciate it. Hopefully this has been helpful in understanding what deaf schools look like and what they're like and how they instruct and how they teach. I hope this is helpful. Thank you so much for watching.
This is so cool. I love this art. You know, for me, I feel like the idea of signing here. It's, oh, so cool. Again, this is wonderful, isn't it? Look at this. Awesome. Ah, oh, very cool.